Who the hell can wait till morning? Talk now at LateNightSportsRadio.com. Millionaires are being made all season long at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. One-week fantasy means no season-long commitments play whenever you want. Got a player who's hurt? No problem. Injuries won't derail your shot of victory because it's like a new season every week, so you're never stuck with the same players. Pick your team in minutes, and you could be on your way to winning huge cash. This season, one listener turned 10 bucks into 5000 Another turned two dollars into ten grand. And a new millionaire has been crowned nearly every week this season at DraftKings.com. You could be next. Imagine winning a million dollars in one day just playing fantasy football at DraftKings. Head over to DraftKings.com now and use promo code Spreaker to play free in the ten million dollar fantasy football world championships. DraftKings.com. Bigger events, bigger winnings, bigger millionaires. Enter Spreaker now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com, that is DraftKings.com. It's been thrilling, titillating, and somewhat toxic, but in a good way. And welcome back to the friendly confines for yet another fine edition of the Claire versus Carlson show. Take two. There are many things you can put in your ears. This is one of them. We are part of the Late Night Sports Radio Network, LateNightSportsRadio.com. She is Claire Elf on the Shelf, Sanders Little Helper, Mullins at the Claire Bear 23 NFL Female Podcast. I'm Andy Carlson at Andy Carlson Show, Purple for the Win, Football Convos, all that other good stuff. We can be found on Twitter at Claire vs. Carlson, also on YouTube, also on iTunes under Late Night Sports Radio, also on Facebook.com. Lots of good stuff. Claire, how's it going? Yo, never better. Now, never better is, all right, so that's positive, right? Yeah, that actually is positive. Because it's the holiday season, so aren't you smiling, and isn't there cheer for little girls and boys, and you're giving out cocoa to carolers and all that good crap? Carolers. Like, do people do that still? Probably, but probably not where we live. I, I don't think I've seen... Actually, you know what? I think there are caler, carolers in our town that go around, except it's... Really? Yeah, except there's no snow right now. It's been a really weird weather season up here because it was freezing and snowy in, in November, but December's been pretty mild and there's zero snow on the ground. Oh, well, okay. I'm sure, uh, I mean, it's not like your weather where it's just hot. and. No, it's pouring down rain for the past 12 hours here, so it's been lovely, just lovely. Now, is there any, any chance that you guys are going to be washed out for Christmas? What exactly does that mean? Like it's going to be flooding? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't see. That's always a possibility. Well, wasn't there like a flood warning on the coast of South Texas? Did I remember seeing that? Was there? I have no idea. I I, I don't know. But we have a lot of stuff to get to besides our little holiday niceties, as this is the final Claire versus Carlson show of 2014. We're taking next week off since Claire... Day after Christmas, she's got to get a uh, jump start on her 2015 holiday shop. Isn't that right? Well, you know me. I'm it's the real Black not Friday. A Grinch. I'm definitely not a Grinch. Not me. Actually, wait. Are you a Grinch? Yeah, I'm a Grinch. Okay. We'll get to all of that. Uh, so our next show will be uh, January 2nd in 2015. So this is it, Claire. This is the last of 2014 of your uh, Claire vs. Carlson experiment. We've gone through 17 episodes, well, 16 for you. How do you think it's yes. gone so far? It's been thrilling, titillating, and somewhat toxic, but in a good way. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, speaking of, of Illing, and we'll talk about North Korea a little later on, uh, I always thought that if I became a Harlem Globetrotter, that my name would be Kim Jong Thrill, because I think that would be so awesome. I've never heard of anything more awesome. Or my uh, And One uh, mixtape or Rucker Park. Uh, uh, 
playing name, that that would be Kim Jong Thrill. Be awesome. Well, yeah, I mean everyone needs a playing name, so why not? Even though I'm even though I'm from the good part of Korea, the South, South Side, Mofo. Uh, (laughs) But we have a lot of stuff to get to. We are going to talk about. Uh, a, a lot of hurtful stuff, really, for Claire, as Bay Cutler has been benched in Chicago. Johnny Manziel had his first start, and uh, by Felicia. Bo Pelini had some choice words for his former boss, Nebraska AD, what's-his-face. Uh, Bears safety Chris Conti had some surprising words that we'll talk about. Jim Harbaugh is going to get paid. Uh, Sony decides to pull the interview. Cuba wide open, hello. And then also mm-hmm. in segment two, we're going to be talking about our Top 10 2014 biggest stories in sports. Because I tried to find a list that we could just read off of, and all of them were crap or pretty regional. And then also, I I hate websites. I know they do it for the clicks, and it's good for, um, you know, ad ad revenue and all that good stuff. But I I just hate slideshows. Slideshows piss Uh, me off. I hate slideshows, too. I won't do it. I will not do it. I See, I I love lists, Mm -hmm. though. But I just wish – I, I just wish they were at on one page, two maximum, two max. But slideshows, I just can't do. No, me either, and I won't do them. That's why I refuse to even bother with anything Bleacher Report. Screw you, Bleacher Report. Quit making me click multiple times. I just want the freaking list. Uh, and we'll also play a little game as Claire gets on the hot seat, and we'll play bowl or no bowl. And this is, of course, sampled from the Dan Patrick show, but uh, they're all right. We gave them credit for it. And so I'll run by a list of bowl names to Claire, and she has to tell me, is it a bowl or not a bowl? And there are some really wacky and wild stuff. I had a lot of fun to research. And we'll get to our week 16 picks as well as Christmas holiday, all that other nonsense throughout this episode of Claire vs. Carl's show. But first off, biggest story that, well, that we have is Jay mm-hmm. Cutler being benched in Chicago. Jimmy Clausen. He's back, baby. Now, Jimmy Clausen is a funny story because you know it's pretty bad when you get benched, if you're Jay Cutler, by a guy who was benched on a 2-14 and 14 team as a rookie in 2010. He is <clears> – <throat> he has the worst everything in the NFL for starting quarterback since 2010. Like hair. Yeah. Well, not to mention that statistically, you mm-hmm. know, he is awful. And so, yeah, Jay Cutler. And, okay, I have theory, mm-hmm. and maybe it's crazy. Maybe I overthink these things. But my theory is that, obviously, okay, Jay Cutler sucked this season, but we all can pretty much anticipate Jimmy Clausen. They're not starting him because he's better, that they think he's going to do more. I think they're doing it because if Jay Cutler was to get hurt, playing that would exponentially decrease his trade value Mm -hmm. so my theory is that they don't want to do that they would like to keep as much of a a value on him as possible so they can try and dangle him in front of teams who are that desperate for a quarterback and you know that the season's done. Put Clawson out there. What's it matter? Well, do, do you think and, that Tressman might be doing this in an attempt to save his job and try and throw <laughs> Cutler under the bus? Because if he can get a win here, uh, they host Detroit this week, and then they play Minnesota Week 17 at the bank up in Minnesota. If he yeah. can get pull one win out of there with Jimmy Clawson, he could be like, I had success last year with Josh McCown, had a little success this year with Jimmy Clawson. It's the system. Jay Cutler's a problem. Why on earth, if your quarterback is struggling to this degree, are you not going to put the ball on the ground in someone like Matt Forte's capable hands? I'm sorry, but Trustman Trustman is the guy orchestrating these game plans. And if your quarterback's struggling, you have a capable running back there. Why Why not show that you can win without Jay Cutler by keeping the ball on the ground as much as possible? Why else pull him unless you want him healthy for a trade partner down the road now they talked about potential landing spots for cutler tampa with lovey who they coexisted <laughs> fine while well, their time in chicago even though they went through like 17 different offense coordinators uh, tennessee since they're they're a mess and cutler obviously has nashville roots being from vanderbilt and all and then also houston texans come on six shooter pew, pew. 
You're not telling me that Bill O'Brien could do some things with Jay Cutler, even though Cutler's was going to be 32 next year. Yeah. Well, I mean, the availability of quarterbacks who are above average in the whole universe is what? 10, 10 quarterbacks in the world who are above average. Okay. As of right now, there are about 10 out of 6 billion people on planet Earth, or six and a half billion people on planet Earth that are effective NFL quarterbacks. Yes. Exactly my point. So if you have a guy who has shown that he can be a somewhat effective NFL quarterback, but who has had questionable coaching and you believe that you could, I mean, Bill O'Brien is an authoritative quote unquote, it's kind of laughable at the moment, but he is a quote unquote QB guru. He has trained, he has trained other coaches on how to develop quarterbacks. I mean, it makes sense except for the financial aspect. So mm-hmm. that's going to be the big hang-up. I think for most teams in the NFL who would be able to get an established quarterback who is at the Jay Cutler level, even though Jay Cutler this season has been pretty deplorable. Well, I threw this theory out here this morning, and uh, you know, a couple of pundits seem to think along the same lines that Jay Cutler, I don't think he loves football. It, yeah. it just seems like he doesn't have – uh, or maybe it's all internal because it just doesn't seem like he he shows that passion that uh, a lot of the top notch players do, and also just you know the work he puts into the game, uh, the 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 clip of him audibling to the wrong play and then just being like, "Damn it!" at the line of scrimmage went you know, you know, viral know. this week, and then also just the fact that his his footwork never improved, and that's something that you can get right just by working hard at the game at your craft. If you have somebody capable teaching you. And Mm. also, let me also say, this is a job for Jay Cutler and most, not all, not a Chris Conti possibly, but for most NFL players, it's simply a job. And if you go to work every day at some place where you hate, where you don't enjoy, you people do tend to get burned out. People Mm. tend to stop caring. And... You've seen Jay Cutler play and get excited and have fun on the football field. And right now he is not having fun on the football field. And I'm not saying it's not Jay Cutler's fault to a degree. Yes, obviously some of it could be Jay Jay Cutler's own attitude issues because he has attitude issues. We know this. Now, do you think he would be a better player if he quit smoking? Mm, Probably. It would probably be handy. Yeah. He should should try E6. They're nice. (laughs) <laughs> you probably should. And gosh, I don't know, because everyone thinks that they're going to change Jay Cutler, but he's 32. He's a lot closer to the end of his career than the beginning, and he, he is what he is. And I actually kind of compared him to uh, like an offensive lineman or a D lineman who doesn't love football, but played it throughout their entire life and then just got to the NFL because they have the talent that can make the money at, because they're 6'6", 300 pounds. There's not. There's only so many humans like that in the world. Oh, there's only so many humans in the world with an arm like Jay Cutler. So maybe he doesn't really love the game, but because he has the capabilities to do so, the God-given talent to do so, and can make a lot of money and set his family up for generations to do that, that could just be why he's in the game. Well, I mean, Jay Cutler is one of those guys that everyone thinks they're going to change. And maybe, you know, he, he's girls, like that. He's, he's like that man. Oh, baby, I can change him. Mama, I can change him. And maybe that's what, you know, the Bears felt about him or any team that you know, Jay Cutler has played for. We can be the ones who change him. Well, change, I mean, okay, I'm going to get a little philosophical here. But change sort of has to come from within. Mm-hmm. And if Jay Cutler doesn't decide he wants to be a prolific NFL quarterback, then no matter what system he's in, Jay Cutler will never be a prolific NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Uh, it is true. Uh, someone who does have a lot of love for the game is Cutler's Bears teammate, safety Chris Conti, who's been in, uh, in and out of the lineups this year with various injuries. Uh, but he said, quote, he'd rather die, or he said he'd rather, quote, die 10 to 15 years earlier than not play in the NFL and have a long life, end quote. Now, I'm sure a lot of guys think this, but not a lot of them say it. And when you see it there in print uh, or you hear the audio, it's it's really startling a bit, isn't it? I'm not startled by that at all. 
I mean, I think that there are a lot of people in this world who are, let's have fun now, and whatever happens down the road happens down the road. I, and believe, I believe the kids call it YOLO. YOLO, exactly. There, Chris Conti is a professional elite level YOLOer. Uh, yeah. I mean, is he not? I, I feel he, like he's willing to give up a lot to not be very good at football. Well, I mean, he has the opportunity, like we said, there are very few people who can be an NFL quarterback. There are very few people in society who can play for an NFL team. Mm -hmm. And understanding that you have the opportunity of a lifetime that a lot of people would kill for and appreciating it for what it is and being willing to, you know, go out there and play injured sometimes and, and accepting your fate as a result of what you put into this opportunity, it, I find it refreshing. It is a little bit refreshing, and it is, you know, like you said, probably some young man machismo, and a lot of these players probably subscribe to the same feeling as Conti did, but they just never say it because uh, I feel like if Chris Conti, you know, heaven forbid, does have some health problems down down the line, and then he wants to join in some of these class action lawsuits against the NFL that are going to continue to be springing up. This is going to be held against him very, very much so. Absolutely. I mean, and that, if that was to happen at that point, then I think we could judge, but we don't know that that's going to happen. So I'm going to chill on that until he actually tries to take advantage of his post NFL life financially. Speaking of chill on that, everyone is chill on Johnny effing, Football, as he got his first start a Sunday at Cincinnati and put up several points uh, while throwing two interceptions. Uh, hot takes were everywhere. People are already calling him a bust, and it was uh, – I had to turn ESPN off because w once they compared how many yards Johnny threw to opposed to how many yards the Cavs threw in a game, yeah. I, I was done. I'm like, come on. You're supposed to be the leader of sports dudes, and this is – this is garbage. So what was your take on your Texas A&M boy done good getting his first start? Uh, Hot take. I just don't find it as huge of a deal as others seem to. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, is you knew coming in that the type of offense that Kevin Sumlin uses in college football is not going to translate to the NFL. And so you're going to have to work with those guys who obviously have talents, but developing those talents to be applicable to professional football. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Menzel is obviously not there. And at least as evidenced by this first start. Now he did, he played better in a preseason game than he did in his first start, which says something given it was week 15 and he's had the whole season to try and learn this offense. I don't excuse his awful performance at the same time. You know, you're going to give a, guys with a lot less of a, a quote-unquote, you know, media-driven name than Johnny Manziel a chance to at least grow on the football field. And the Browns' chances of getting in the playoffs, are they non-existent yet? Uh, are they I, be I believe they're out, yes. So let them play these last two games. And if you don't like it, then, you know, Figure out what you're going to do at the quarterback position. Maybe he's not the answer. Mm. It is what it is. Yeah, I listened to uh, Doug Farrar of Sports Illustrated had a, has a podcast. He had Greg Cosell on. And they brought up some really interesting takes about uh, going from a college quarterback in a college offense to an NFL quarterback. And they compared him to uh, Troy Smith, I believe, when he came out of Ohio State. Heisman winner, just like Manziel, but just never found footing uh, in the NFL because it is such a different game going from – uh, an offense where wide receivers are wide open and you don't have to throw them open. you got huge windows. But in the NFL, people a lot faster, and those windows are a lot tighter, and you have to throw with anticipation. And that's something that Manziel doesn't have yet. But then again, right. a lot of rookies don't. Right. Um, Teddy the, being the exception. Uh, Hello. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, proceed. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um yeah, there's it just winning a Heisman Trophy does not guarantee anything. If you look at the statistics, success for previous Heisman winning quarterbacks in the NFL, it, it's not on their side. 
You mean that Gino Toretta and Jason White aren't lighting things up? No, they they certainly are not. And I, I just it's it's hard to just fight. What wins in college doesn't necessarily win in the NFL. And just because you win or you're flashy or you look good at the college level, it really very rarely means crap in the NFL. They play a different type of football, and it's not going to translate. The defenses are too good. Once you get game film on these guys and you realize what they're all about, it's so easy to light them up in the NFL. And, you know, you've got to mold that guy. You have to draft that guy believing that you can mold him into an NFL quarterback. And if you can't, then he's just another, you know, Heisman statistic. Speaking of Heisman statistic, do you think Mariota is going to pan out in the NFL? No. Oh, you're breaking Sharona's heart. I know. I don't think he is. I just, I mean, and I know that that's not the, that's not what a lot of people want to believe. And that's fine that they don't want to believe that. But <clears throat> just that type of offense where you find your first read and you throw the ball and you don't ever have to go through progressions quickly on the fly with huge guys coming at you. That is a big adjustment in the NFL. And it's not something that comes natural to a lot of people. And the Oregon offense is not one that traditionally, I mean, Chip Kelly has it in Philly, but we see what their quarterbacks are doing right now. Mm. We've seen what they've done in his second year. They're not very good. You mean that Dennis Dixon isn't (laughs) panning out in the NFL level? Yeah, I'm sorry to say, no, I don't think he is. I don't think he's the guy. I suppose. Uh, Someone else who was not the guy... Uh, at Nebraska anymore was Bo Pelini by Felicia. And mm-hmm. Bo had some choice words for his former boss, a uh, Nebraska AD, uh, who cares what his name is, Sean, I- Sean Eichhorst. Yeah, uh, there you go. And in his last meeting with his Nebraska players, this is some good stuff. So here we go. Uh, this is from the Omaha World Herald broke the story, and Pelini told his players, quote, Appreciate you guys coming out, and uh, you know, obviously, the last couple of days for me have been kind of crazy. Just giving you guys a heads up, it wasn't a surprise to me. It really wasn't. Uh, I really didn't have any relationship with the AD. Um, the guy you saw the guy yesterday. The guy is a total pussy. The crowd laughs. <laughs> I mean, he is, and he's a total cunt. And since I've been here, he's been here for two years. I've had a conversation with the guy a couple of times. You've seen him. He's never been in the locker room at the end of the day. He's just, he was never going to support us and quote. And he goes on like that a little bit and complete flamethrower out the door. And this is actually one of the things that I loved about Bo Pelini is that he does not give an F like, uh, I think it was last year. He got in some heat for calling Cornhusker fans, uh, Fairweather fans and a spade a spade and all that good stuff. Uh, but he just completely torched, uh, Nebraska out the door. Uh, he recently was hired as Youngtown State's new head coach. That's in Ohio. I, I believe they're one double A, and it's where Pelini's hometown is as well. And yeah, uh, what are, you, what are your thoughts about just completely blowing up the former boss? I mean, <clears throat> it's what does it matter now? I mean, honestly, if you go back and you look at what happened with when Tom Osborne left and then what's happening with Polini and the situation with this, what, what's his name? Einhorn. I don't John remember. Eichhorst. Eichhorst. Well, it'd be better if it was Einhorn, I think. Cause that makes me Finkel think. Einhorn. Finkel is Einhorn. Yeah. That, um, that's really funny to me. Anyway, y- y- it does seem like there are internal things because if you look about Polini's record, and how those students, even after he's fired from the job, they still laugh at, you know, whenever he says things. It's not like the crowd seemed at all disenchanted with Bo Pelini. Mm-hmm. It seems like Bo Pelini and the administration had an obvious rift. And I don't think anyone who could potentially hire him in the future would hold that directly against him and him alone. It's his personality. So he is. It is, and it also is part of what makes him successful. And speaking of successful, Michigan, baby, <clears throat> our ball, allegedly offered him a contract of six years, $48 million. That number has been disputed, but uh, I'm guessing Harbaugh's camp leaked that out there, just putting it out there for leverage, whether it be with 
you know, the Raiders, 49ers, wherever Harbaugh might end up in the NFL. But do you think he's legitly considering this offer? It sure is a lot of money. Wow. It is a place that he is familiar with, obviously. And a place that he, I think, you would like to believe as just a person of some semi-reasonable integrity, he wouldn't want to lead on or cause it, them any sort of distress. But it's such great leverage. Well, it is. But at the same time, he has some allegiances there. Hmm. I mean, I personally wouldn't hold – if A&M offered me a bunch of money, I wouldn't hold them out there and – cause them future damage just to gain some benefit in my life. Would you be the VP of alumni relations? Hello. Why wouldn't I be? That would be pretty cool. But I'm, I'm kind of what they call a two percenter. I don't all buy into all the Aggie-ness. So yeah, I wouldn't be a good person for that job, but. But you wouldn't be at hollering practice. Yell practice. What else? No, I only went to one or two of those. Yeah. Lame. Uh, I don't do that sort of thing. I'm not a cheerleader type of football fan. I just want to watch the games. All right, so back on Harbaugh. He's already leveraged them once uh, when they before the hire Brady Hoke and got a better deal out of the 49ers. And, you know, Michigan loves Harbaugh and you know, both the brothers. Uh, actually, didn't Jim no, – didn't John just go to high school in Ann Arbor, I believe? I have no idea. Uh, anyways, uh, so they obviously have allegiance to the Harbaugh family and especially Jim. But how many times can he just use them as leverage? Maybe this time, maybe one more time after Michigan inevitably hires another coach and then fires him within four years. Because I, I don't know I, I feel, that I feel like this job will always be in his back pocket. But I don't think that. I mean, there are grown ass men running Michigan's athletic department. I don't think they're going to fall for this if it's a ploy. I don't think they're going to fall for it more than once. I don't know, but Michigan's suffering attendance, uh, they broke their streak of 100,000 at, at the big house. And uh, Harbaugh, you know, love him or hate him, he is going to be Michigan's favorite son. He is going to be the guy who can save us from Urban, the guy who can beat Ohio State and blah, blah, blah. So do you think the ultimate coup would be he uses this to leverage a huge-ass contract with the Raiders in the NFL, somehow wins the Super Bowl with the Raiders within five years, the Raiders get sick of him, as they inevitably do of Harbaugh, and then he goes to Michigan. He comes home. He got a Super Bowl ring. He's coaching his alma mater. He's still young. He's still spry. He's making an ass load of money and living like a king up there in Ann Arbor. I I just don't think that the university is going to be willing to play the fool. And I don't think that people are going to be so forgiving if, as it inevitably does in this day and age, gets out that he was playing them. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, speaking of playing, North Korea was playing Sony, allegedly, uh, as <laughs> the, there was the data hack and released all of the emails, all those intimate details, social security numbers of actors, movie stars, and some very uh, questionable emails that ruffled a lot of feathers. And then this all over, allegedly, uh, the movie The Interview, featuring Seth Rogen and James Franco, which was due to come out on Christmas, but Sony decided to pull it. Uh, of course, as I'm sure many of you heard, it dealt with a plot of two interviewers, two like, news people, and a plot to kill. Kim Jong Un, the current demigod of North Korea, and so what are your thoughts on this? Do you think they Sony chickened out? Do you think they should release the movie? I, what else could they have possibly had that they hadn't already released? That's what I wonder. Hmm. I mean, what what's the threat now? Everything uh, is they out were there. threatening moviegoers, and then a couple of movie theater chains said that they were not going to show the movie, and then right. Sony eventually buckled there. Right. I know that they said that they weren't going to show the movie, but, and, that's happened with other movies before. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm not seeing it. There is a movie theater in Austin, Texas, where they, instead of showing that movie at the times that they, in the screens they had planned to show the interview, they're going to show Team America World Police, which America. I find mm -hmm. awesome. It's awesome. America. 
Yeah. Now, see, I, I don't know what's going on with this because how come North Korea didn't put up a stir and hack whatever company was putting out Team America World Police in 2004? Right. Well, how, that was 10 years how come ago. Is, how come is, it's this movie? It seems a little too – to go all full conspiracy theory, it seems a little too easy to blame the, the current boogeyman, which is North Korea, and – it just seems like this might be an inside job, maybe a disgruntled employee, maybe a competitor uh, movie. Well, company. except for that, there is evidence out there that about all of the te technological ways that I don't quite understand things being traced through China, DNS spoofing. I mean, all sorts of things that are able to be traced to North Korea. And the fact of the matter is, is, is this guy, the current leader, is younger and probably more aware of these things and interested in international, cons you know, appearances maybe than his father was. I don't know. Uh, Kim Jong Un isn't really technologically with it. I think he had a, Z a Zoom media. Player. Well, he pro he probably has people working for him though that are making are you know making cases that this is important. They're assassinating you in this movie, and. We need to do something about it. But like I said, and I'm proud to be a South Korean, where at least I know I'm not a douche. There you have it. There we go. On that note, we got to take a break. Claire versus Carlson show will be our B. For daily conversations with the players, coaches, and contributors that make this game great. Regulators, mount up. We're coming. Football Convos. <laughs> visit footballconvos.com or visit us at iTunes. And coming back for a segment two of the Claire vs. Carlson show, the final CBC of 2014 and all that good stuff. Claire, your New Year's resolutions, how many did you follow through on this year? I don't do New Year's resolutions. If something needs to be changed, I just change it when it needs to be changed. Well, you quit smoking, kind of. Well, recently, yeah, but that wasn't New Year's. That was just because it was time to quit smoking. And you quit not eating meat, so that's exciting as well. Well, that was a long time ago. Well, all right, so before we dive into segment two, like how did this all come about? How come you're a, a born again normal human being instead of a vegetarian who are oh. not people? Well, I was just a vegetarian in college and for a few years after because I was very concerned, well, I still am, with the rights of everything, but animals – it makes me sad. I knew too much about how animals are treated in captivity before we kill them and eat them. So it bothered me. I didn't want to be a part of that industry. But, of course, I still ate cheese and eggs and milk and that sort of thing. So, you know, yeah, was kind it's of perfectly fine. We're pulling on their teats and then we're stealing their uh, unfertilized embryos. You know, it's better than just torturing them and then killing them and eating them. At least it was in my very young mind. Yeah, that's it's true. I, I actually almost went vegetarian a couple of years ago after watching a bunch of those documentaries like Food Inc. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it's, just, it's smarter to be very careful about about where your food comes from. You don't necessarily have to rule everything out. Just be aware. On that note, on that very happy note, let's get to mm -hmm. the 2014's biggest sports stories. Now, we made our own top ten because – the top tens that we found out there were crap. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, not crap, but very localized, and we already talked about the whole slideshow thing that kind of pissed me off. So number 10 on the Claire versus the Carlson Show, biggest sports stories of 2014. Northwestern football players unionized, and this after the National Labor Relations Board decided that players are school employees and can 
unionize. The team voted to do so, but that's all been in kind of limbo, and that's been a big step in players possibly getting paid. Claire? Yeah, I mean, I, I was pretty excited when the story happened just because I like social upheaval, things that change the system or could change the system when they seem unfair. And, you know, the whole university's making millions off of student athletes who put themselves out there, potential risk for injury, no financial gain that is public knowledge. Um, yeah, it, it just seemed kind of cool. And so I think we're wait. are we waiting to still hear oral arguments on this and the timing of the final decision? Yeah, I haven't really been keeping up with it, and who knows uh, at this yeah. point. I do believe that private schools uh, will have that capability, but state schools, I don't know yet. Well, and I, from what I understand, a, lo a lot more football players are ensuring themselves at the college level in case, at least so if they are injured and they can't go on to the next level when they were anticipated to do so, they can you know, receive some sort of benefit for the effort they put in. Absolutely. And speaking of effort, uh, if you hear Claire Puffin, that's her e egg. And what's the flavor today? Um, banana cream pie. So imagine Claire in a smoky jazz club just puffing on the e egg, And then you walk up to her and she's like, what's that big boy? And you're like, is that banana cream pie? And I'm like, yeah. Smells like Baker Square in here. What's a Baker Square? Uh, damn it. Yeah, I was trying to go for a national uh, <laughs> like a pie and restaurant chain, except Baker Square is probably regional. Am I right? Well, I don't know that I've ever heard of it, but there are things I haven't heard of, so, you know, what else? Number nine of the biggest sports stories, 2014, Claire versus Carlson version. Uh, Tony Stewart kills Kevin Ward Jr. on a sprint car dirt track in upstate New York, uh, no formal charges or no criminal charges, excuse me, were filed against Tony Stewart. Uh, civil action could be pending, but it was just a very sad and weird story to come out during the summer. Yeah, I remember um, just being on Twitter that night. And so many hot takes. Coming out. All the hot so takes. Many. And so many. And everyone... Everyone knew exactly what mm. happened there at this little track in Canada. And, you know, they knew no, all the details, uh, and they made their judgments. Yeah, oh, was and, it? I thought it was in Canada. No, it, I believe it was Ontario County in New York, so that's where uh -huh, my, my guy bad. Confused. My bad. Yeah. And okay, my bad. I, I was guilty of a couple of hot takes as well, as everyone seems to get their Twitter lawyer uh, degrees very quickly mm -hmm. here. But o overall, just uh, there's probably fault on, on both sides, and Ward was uh, – high at the time uh, on weed and just made bad judgment charging a, a movie. Did you vehicle. just say he was high on weed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was, uh, uh, I believe there's a, he was legally intoxicated. How about we just say he was stoned? Under the influence. There you go. Yeah. He was stoned. And then mm -hmm. he did come down the track and charge a moving vehicle. So, uh, it's yeah. just, just a sad story, uh, all the way around and we'll see how that all plays out later on. Uh, number eight, a little bit happier one. I'm coming home. LeBron's coming home. That was Cleveland. only number eight? Number eight, yes. Oh. Mostly because it happened a while ago, and I don't really care anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but that was so awesome when, when it did happen as, you know, LeBron is from Akron. It's not Cleveland, but Akron is, you know, basically like the, the Fort Worth to Cleveland's Dallas. And just showing that all the vitriol. <laughs> All the vitriol, yeah, it's like comparing it. Anyways. You compare Dallas and Cleveland, which is awesome. Dun, dun, dun. Because I hate them both. I'm sorry. Go there ahead. Go. That uh, seems good. But the vitriol and hatred that when LeBron left to go to Miami, there was there. It, it was just so heartwarming in a way that LeBron can come back after he got his rings and hopefully finally bring a title to Cleveland because I don't think they've had a championship in any of the major sports since ever. Did the Indians ever win anything? I don't know. Me either. I don't really I think care. the Browns might have won like a championship when there was like six teams in the league. Like the Akron Pros and the Canton Bulldogs were in the league. Something. Oh, like that. yeah. The Indians won the World Series in 1920 and 1948. Half the days on the Cuyahoga. So that was number eight. Uh, number seven, uh, players protesting. Uh, the Rams with the Ferguson hands up, don't shoot. NBA players with the I can't breathe t-shirts. Andrew Hawkins 
uh, protesting the the Ohio shooting of the 12 year old with the pellet gun, and it, it's significant in that players usually don't take a political stance and. I always go back and forth on this. I, I know that there's a time and place for it, but I kind of respect them taking yeah. a stance for what they believe in rather than the whole cliched player speak fence sitting. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, because underneath it all, they may be highly paid idols to many people, but they are just human beings who are allowed to have opinions on things that affect society on the whole. And there are times where, you know, I think, I can't think of a good example, but players taking a stand against disease or domestic violence or whatever else. And this is a societal ill and they are very influential. And if they Mm -hmm. can bring awareness to the cause and to the situation, then good for them for doing so. Whether you think it's right or wrong, good for them for making their opinions known. To the rest I, of society. I agree because I, I respect them for this, but uh, I can see both sides of it. Where you know I respect them for saying you know their piece here, but also uh, Michael Jordan has a famous quote where he's like, "How come you don't talk about politics?" He was asked, and he replied, "Because Republicans buy shoes too." And I can understand the whole if you uh-huh. are a global brand, yeah, you know, keeping everyone happy, sitting on the fence. Uh, but I, I don't know. I always go back and forth on this issue. Yeah, well, I have no problem with. It. I mean, if you're if you want to talk about your political leanings, by mm. all means, feel free to do so. If I don't like it, I don't have to pay attention to it. And then I also understand people saying, "Do sports." You're a sports person. Do sports. And well, as long as you're doing sports along with it, then what the hell is the problem? I don't know. Uh, they pull that out with players and also radio personalities as well, and I don't know. That's all convoluted. Uh, we'll we'll move on to the number six, Claire versus Carlson Show, 2014 biggest sports story of the year. Monet Davis, first girl to win a Little League World Series start as a pitcher. Uh, that Philadelphia area team, rock stars, baby, was on the cover of Sports Illustrated and all that cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, it was pretty cool when it happened. Uh, this young girl basically becomes a national sports treasure in a very short period of time. And she's on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and she's being talked about in terms of the Sports Illustrated curse, which is unfortunate. But Yeah, she got, she got rocked by Las Vegas. But in fairness, that Las Vegas team is stacked. Those kids oh. did not look 14. I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention. I'll be real honest. And, of course, NCAA being NCAA – uh, Monet was saying that her dream is to play uh, basketball at UConn, and then Nancy Bull say, NCAA come in saying, "Well, th- these might be impermissible benefits, so this could affect her her, her college el- eligibility." <laughs> Spare okay. me. I hate the NCAA. Totally. Number five, twenty fourteen uh, World Cup. Germany wins it, beats Argentina one nothing after boat racing Brazil seven to one in the semifinals. Uh, this was a big deal, even to Americans, where the American team did okay, not probably not as well as they really wanted to. Jurgen Klingsman, uh, Landon Donovan was not on the team. Uh, Josie Altador got hurt. I'm just trying to remember all these bits and pieces. Yeah, well, I mean, at least we can not pay attention to soccer for four more years. I'm not going to lie, though. It, it is kind of fun. It might just be the whole USA patriotic uh Stuff way down deep inside, but it, well, I think that's I what watching. it is. It was I think that's what it is for most people mm-hmm. because it's it's like the Olympics. You don't care about swimming unless an American is trying to beat a Russian and get a gold medal, do you? I mean, most people don't. It's kind of like soccer in America. I mean, yeah, it's great and the best of the best are a lot of fun to watch. But soccer MLS or whatever, come on, man, that's boring. oh come on. You don't like the Houston Dynamo. I tried. I really did try. I've been to a few games or matches, whatever, and it's just not as entertaining as the big three or four, including hockey. It's just not. I suppose. Uh, someone else who's not in the big four anymore, Donald Sterling, he gone, he gone. Yeah, well, that, that needed to happen. It, yeah, I mean, I know that there is there was a bit of controversy from people who I greatly respect upon his 
what was it, civil rights, I guess, kind of being violated and that mm. these private conversations came out and are you not allowed to have opinions in America? In the privacy of your own home, yes. Right. So that is a little troubling, but at the same time, knowing what we know that this guy is in charge of a team that employs many of the people he admittedly doesn't think are equivalent to people of a different skin tone. Like, how, how can you say when there are 29 other owners who disavow his statements, how can you say that he should be allowed to be in charge of an NBA team? I have a problem with that. So, yeah, yeah good, I, good riddance. I think bottom line, there's been many stories throughout the years that we just didn't really pay attention to of him just affecting people's lives as uh, the sort of this very racist, very discriminatory landlord in the Los Angeles area where he made all of his millions in real estate. And now it just took him being a recording of him by a, an also shady person, was her name, yeah. Di Stiviano. Uh, and it, it almost turned into like Capone's tax evasion thing where he's done much worse stuff, but then something like this trips him up and gets him out. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, it's fun to watch a villain get his comeuppance and, you know, him fighting it all the way. And I mean, he's probably still fighting it as far as I know. But, yeah, it's, it was kind of fun to watch, honestly. Also, uh you're kind of of this ilk. Do you ever watch a show, Aqua Teen Hunger Force? No, but I've heard of it. Okay, because Donald Sterling sounds exactly like Master Shake uh, on the oh. show. Oh, well, I need to maybe watch it and sort of be able to make that comparison. There you go. Number three of Claire vs. Carlson's 2014 biggest sports stories is Lauren Hill, Mount, the pride of Mount St. Joseph, uh, playing with terminal cancer. Uh, and we all saw those moments of, for scoring the baskets in multiple games, uh, Mount St. Joseph's getting uh, permission from the NCAA, who actually did the right thing for a change, to move up their season over two weeks to ensure that Lauren could get in her dream of becoming a college basketball player. Uh, she's still fighting the good fight, uh, recently decided to step away from the game, and is now an honorary coach at Mount St. Joseph. And it's just all in all just one of those sports stories that just makes you feel good or just makes you feel happy that you know good things are happening to you know, people even if in terrible situations yeah i mean honestly it's awful that this girl is suffering through brain cancer that the things she is doing through her increased public position that this college has given her the opportunity to do it's it's moving, it's touching, it's very poignant, and yay for both all the parties involved. Absolutely. Uh, number two of Claire versus Carlson's biggest sports stories of 2014, Michael Sam. Mm. Enough said. Thoughts? Really, though. Really. The media turned this guy into a villain, and then it, it makes it so questionable about who did what, and now him saying that, the Rams treated him horribly. Uh, you know, it just makes you want to just say forget all of it. And and I just want to forget it ever happened because it became a story not about what it could have been in a positive way. It has become very unpleasant. Uh, it has taken some unfortunate turns. Um, you know, it was a landmark day when he did get drafted, although I think he would have been much better off if he had gone undrafted, uh, if that makes sense, because the Rams are loaded at defensive, on defensive mm -hmm. line, and uh, if he was undrafted, he could have picked his spot where he had the best chance of making the team. But he did shine a little bit in preseason. We all remember when Twitter broke, sorry, Kim Kardashian, when Michael <laughs> Sam sacked Johnny Manziel and the Thunderdome lit up. Uh, but the Rams ended up cutting him in the last round of cuts, or was the second to last round. Anyways, one of the two yeah. ended up in Dallas on their practice squad for a little bit, and then recently was cut from there as well. I still think he has a shot in the NFL. He might have to go up to the CFL, pull the Cameron Wake style odyssey of go up there and beast because the man obviously has talent. He is one of those tweeners like we've talked about on the show before. Uh, not quite big enough to be a, a four down. 4-3 defensive end, not quite fast enough to be a stand-up linebacker, but 
he can get to the passer, and in the passing league, there's always a premium on guys who can get to the quarterback. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think his time in the NFL is done by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I, I just think he didn't land, like you said, in the most opportune spot for him in his career, and that he definitely still could benefit a team, and this offseason will probably give him the opportunity to find that team. There you go. Uh, and number one of Clever Carlson's 2014 Biggest Sports Stories, Roger Goodell and his handling of the NFL's domestic violence problem, or lack of handling it, as it were. Ray Rice, Greg Hardy, Adrian Peterson also falls underneath that. Uh, Ray McDonald was a, a quit, or no charges were filed about his domestic violence, but then we all know what happened to Ray McDonald recently. And, yeah, this is the biggest story of 2014, in my opinion. Yeah, the NFL is the most powerful sports organization in the world. I mean, maybe FIFA. I don't know if FIFA is more popular or FIFA, FIFA, whatever the heck it is. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that game. Um, but whatever. Um, FIFA. No, it's FIFA. It is FIFA. Oh, okay. Because I'm trying to say, I'm like, yeah, because I'm thinking of the game, the video game. I'm like, yeah, it's FIFA. Okay. <laughs> um, but and then coming out that the NFL had to turn over its phone and email records, and there are some inconsistencies. I find that very curious. And Roger Goodell, this story is not over, and uh, I think there's still quite a bit to come out. I, I, he's been shed in a very poor light this year, and it had been there had been people who had quietly, not in the majority, had been – criticizing Goodell for years and years about the things that he had done. But in the meantime, he was making money for the NFL. Well, it seems as though maybe that is plateauing and what the return on the investment may be reaching its, you know, its point of no return essentially. Uh, And uh, I'm kind of glad that in in a way it's a blessing in disguise that he botched the Ray Rice handling of things so badly because this has been, uh, an issue with the NFL and also society wide for decades, for mm-hmm. many, many years now that society and the NFL uh, has not taken seriously as it should. And I, I think with his only initially only giving Ray Rice the two games and the outrage that came from that, uh, I think that was a big wake up call to everyone saying that we need to take domestic violence, especially towards women very seriously as it is a national issue and i will give roger goodell credit since he screwed that up and then he he had a couple of backslidings uh trying to make up for it but it does seem like the nfl is take starting to take a hard line stance with issues like this which they should have done a long time ago but with this it's better late than never i'm glad that they're finally getting something in place like this even if Adrian Peterson had to be the sacrificial lamb uh, on that, and even though we questioned that process as well. But going forward, Goodell and, and everyone at the NFL and even the NFLPA have to get these disciplinary stuff standardized and make sure that there's no room for uh, questions of credibility or credulity or any other questions questioning of these disciplinary measures because if they have in place, it's got to be a hard line and it's got to be firm instead of all this making it up as you go stuff. Absolutely. They need to anticipate their problems better and they need to have rules in place instead of trying to create the commissioner's non-exempt list, you know, on the fly. So it needs to happen. There and need those, to be rules in place. And those were the top 10 Claire versus Carlson 2014 biggest sports stories. A lot of stuff happened. I mean, I, I forgot about a bunch of this stuff. You too? Yeah. It, it's, uh, the, there have been some crazy things that went down in 2014, so it was fun to review those. It's like I didn't even think that LeBron left Cleveland, to be honest. I mean, really? Did, yeah. did he even win a title in Miami? I don't, I don't even know. I Who's mean, LeBron? There you go. Uh, running a little long on today's Claire vs. Carlson show, so we're actually going to go four segments today. All of that goodness. We'll be back in segment three with Bowl or No Bowl will be RB. I think I'm lisping a little bit. Are you? I don't know.
The Purple for the Win podcast is your one-stop shop for the team you hate that you love. That's right, dedicated to the pain and pleasure that is the Minnesota Vikings. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube for our weekly and bi-weekly mediocrity. And, of course, there's always purpleftw.com. Because, you know, aside from nipple clamps and chains and whips, cheering for the purple people eaters is probably the most pleasurable pain you can experience on this planet. So come on in. For the mediocre analysis and the more mediocre humor, purpleftw.com. That's right, purpleftw.com. Straight cash, homie. Oh, I know why I love it. It has passion fruit. There we go. And we are back for the third segment of the Claire vs. Carl show. You just heard Claire come back from break, talk about her love of, what is it now? What do you love? The, the hurricane. It's the only the redeem, drink. It's the only redeeming quality about New Orleans. Is that correct? Well, besides the No. Food. No, I love New Orleans. I mean, in terms of sports and their general fandom, no. But as a city, a hurricane. New Orleans is just a fantastic place. Would you live in New Orleans if given an opportunity? In a heartbeat. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. All right, so now what? Hur- what was the, what's the best place to get a hurricane in New Orleans? I, I don't know. I mean, I know Pat O'Brien's is the place where it was created, mm-hmm. but I've had great hurricanes in a few places in New Orleans. It has passion fruit. Passion fruit makes everything Perfect. There you go. And everyone, if you would like to buy Claire a Christmas present, a gift card to Pat O'Brien's, if they even do gift cards, would be right up her alley. Mm, yes, please. Mm, yeah, or a bunch of passion fruit. Uh, mm. My passion is coming up with stupid games to make Claire play, and this one is no different. The game today is Bowl or No Bowl in honor of the 72 or 79 different bowl games that are coming up uh, starting tomorrow? Tonight? Tomorrow? Yeah. Pretty sure there's five bowl games tomorrow, so that's always very exciting. And some of these names for the bowls are very stupid nowadays, mm-hmm. very commercial. Uh, I suppose that ha- has to happen since there are like 90 of them. So we will get into that. And this game, as always, we have our correct answer sound effect is. And our incorrect sound effect is. Eventually. Hello. There we go. So, Claire, are you ready? We have 11 names, and it's very simple. You tell me bowl or no bowl. Bring it on. Please. You don't scare me. Please. Number one, Popeye's Chicken Bahamas Bowl. Popeye's Chicken Bahamas Bowl. Bowl or no bowl? Is it in the Bahamas? I I, I don't know. Oh. You would think. (sighs) I was hoping that I could get a clue out of that. Um, by you going, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, I accidentally gave it away. No, you didn't give it away because you're too sneaky for that. Yes. Um, Popeye's, okay, let's say yeah. That is correct. Popeye's Chicken Bahamas Bowl, first annual this year at Thomas Robinson Stadium, Nassau, Bahamas, featuring Central Michigan versus Western Kentucky, woohoo, on December 24th. Uh, not bad for those guys. Uh, number two. Carl Jr.'s Los Angeles Bowl. Carl's Jr.'s Los Angeles Bowl. Bowl or no bowl? Really? It's like you want to believe it just because. But with them, I would think there would be a much more perverse name than just the Carl's Jr. Los Angeles Bowl. So I'm going to go with no. That is correct. That is not a bowl game. Well done, Claire. Thank you. Logical gets you everywhere. So you are 2 and 0 oh on our 11 questions. Number 3, Raycom Media Came- Camellia Bowl. Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. I know the Camellia Bowl is something, but I don't know about the Ramcon Media part. I didn't heard that. But since I know that the Camellia Bowl is something, I'm going to go with yes. That is correct. 
Uh, it is played at the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama this year, pitting Southern Alabama Hornets versus Bowling Green Falcons on December 20th. Uh, wait, no. Southern Alabama, that's Alabama State. Ah, whatever. Anyways, yes, 3-0 and oh for Claire in the Bowl or No Bowl. Number four, the oh. Edward Jones Show Me State Bowl. The Edward Jones Show Me State Bowl, Bowl or No Bowl. Oh, um, I'm going to go with bowl. That is... Hello? Incorrect. That Damn is it. not a bowl, although it, it kind of makes sense, right? Edward Jones sponsors uh, St. Louis's Dome and... You know, show me stays Missouri. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's why I'm so. I need to come up with fake bowl names. That should be my new racket. Get number, on that. I mean, num- all you need is one more outlet. Number five, the TaxSlayer.com bowl. TaxSlayer.com bowl. It is. It is a bowl. I've heard of that one. It is correct. Everbank Field, Jacksonville, Iowa versus Tennessee on January 2nd. Do you remember when playing on New Year's Day or past used to mean something? <laughs> I know, right? All the good bowl games were on New Year's Day. Now yeah. it's just like random. About Whatever. That. Claire, you are 4-1 and one so far. Number six, Famous Dave's Copper Bowl. Famous Dave's Copper Bowl. Bowl or no bowl? Famous Dave's Copper I know the Copper Bowl is a thing. I don't know if fa- Famous Dave's is the sponsor, but sure. Let's go with it, yes. That is... Hello? Incorrect. The Copper Bowl used to be a thing. No longer. It is defunct. Actually, I think it might be under a different name now, but I don't know. Damn it! And full disclosure, it's not... uh, I I have not listed a real bowl, but a fake sponsor. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Uh, Good to know halfway through. Uh, Number seven, (laughs) the Ticket City Cactus Bowl. The Ticket City Cactus Bowl. Bowl or no bowl? Bowl. That is correct. Played at Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona, Washington versus Oklahoma State on January 2nd. Uh, Claire is 5-2 and two through 7. Here's number 8, Chrysler Detroit Bowl. The Chrysler Detroit Bowl. Bowl or no bowl? No bowl. That is correct. She sniffed yes. it out. Sniffed it out. 6-2 and two through 8. Number 9, the Vizio Bayou Bowl. The Vizio Bayou Bowl. Bowl or no bowl? Bowl. That is hello. Incorrect. No, Damn I'm it. sorry. Vizio is a sponsor of the Rose Bowl. I, I uh-uh. believe. Well, screw you, Vizio. Ah, uh, it's all right. No, you still got uh, six right in the bank going forward. Number ten, the Russell Athletic Bowl. The Russell Athletic yes. Bowl. Yes. That is yes. correct. Bowl. Citrus yes. Bowl. Orlando, Florida, Oklahoma versus Clemson on December 29th. Also, one of the more entertaining Twitter accounts. The Russell Athletic Bowl. So you is should it? check it out. It is. It's good. Uh, and last but not least, see, you are 7-3, and three, so you have locked up a winning record. But just for schnitz and giggles, number 11, the Waffle House Carolina Classic. The Waffle House Carolina Classic Bowl or no bowl? That's hard. Because, I mean, I could see Waffle House having a bowl, and Carolina is a good place for it. Uh, no, I'm going to say no, it's not a bowl. That is... Correct. Yes. Yay. Yes. So, Claire, you end up eight and three in bowl or no bowl. You did pretty well. I rock the bowls, bro. You did rock the bowls. Although, the Waffle House Carolina Classic, I would go to that. Uh, I would eat the hell out of some waffles right now, that's for sure. Damn right. Uh, something else we're going to eat the hell out of is segment four. So, we'll be back with Claire versus Carlson picks and holiday cheer and all that good stuff. BRB. And we're back for segment four. Claire, uh, Claire apparently wants to choke out uh, a popular music artist. Which one was it? Uh, all about that bass chick. Oh, my God. She oh needs to God. go away. Her and Taylor Swift. I have been in a car too much without Sirius Satellite uh-huh. Radio. And it has shown me that 
Megan Trainer and Taylor Swift are satanic, and they need to go away now. Oh, now. They, they wouldn't play them if people didn't like them. And I don't understand. It's all about them listeners. About them listeners. N- neither of them can sing. It's awful. I, I'm not going to lie. I've been a, a Taylor Swift hater, especially early on when she was like, and my boyfriend just broke up with my boyfriend again and all that stuff. But her latest yeah. album, a lot of that stuff is pretty, no. pretty catchy. I'm not going to lie. It, it may be catchy, but it's awful. And her voice is deplorable. It needs to go away. And her hair. Can we just talk about what is her hair doing? Why? Know, is Why it is it short shoulder length layers with bangs? Come on, man. That is just bad. That's all. I'm good. I'm good on Taylor Swift now. Thanks. Speaking of bad was Claire's picks from last week as Andy got the advantage by one. But I For one week. This is like my first time I've won uh, since we did this stupid thing. And again, recapping the stakes, uh, we reset on week 13. And the winner uh, of the these last couple weeks gets to have a photo of the loser with a little grease board saying, Andy Carlson is the greatest person in the world, or something to that effect. Uh, but currently, uh, Claire is leading with 31 and 14, and I'm at 28 and 17. We both got Jacksonville right last night, so it's actually 32 and 29. That's my bad. But, Claire, are you nervous in the service? I'm just quaking in my boots over here. You, you would be quaking in your Nazi stomping Doc Martin boots over there. I do have a pair of Doc Martins. You Don't hate. would. From like 1994? No, I actually just bought of, them. We were just off a tour with Pearl Jam and Soundgarden. I wish. Black Hole Sun, won't you come? Well, no, I like, never mind, it doesn't matter. Um, Are you going to talk about Chris Cornell's bangs too now? Chris Cornell does not have bangs because he is a grown-ass man. There you go. Uh, All right, speaking of grown-ass men, let's get into these Week 16 games. First ones, ooh, Saturday Night Football. Get some Philadelphia at Washington, who you get? Hmm, Philadelphia. Washington is just waiting for their implosion. I, I think Philadelphia is going to roll coming off that uh, tough loss at home versus Dallas, and Washington is just ripe for collapse. And an yes. Kicking. Yes. Uh, second game, the, both of these games look very good at the beginning of the season, but not so much now. San Diego. At San Francisco, San Diego still in the wild card hunt. San Francisco, not so much. Who you get? San Francisco is not. San Francisco is going to lose. That's all. Oh, so you got San Diego on the road? Yep. See, I, I toyed with this as well, but uh, Philip Rivers, I, I think they're just. I don't think they get it done. Rivers is hurt, and I, I think they're, they finally get theirs and are eliminated from playoff contention this week. I got San Francisco at home. I think they rally the troops one last time for Jim Harbaugh before he, he goes. You think? Before he goes. You think? Sunday okay. nooner games, Minnesota at Miami. Who you got? <sighs> uh, this is hard. That's what she said. <sighs> Minnesota. Oh, baby. Welcome to the dark side. I didn't say I like Minnesota. I simply chose them to win a single game. See, I think Teddy B, even against that very good Miami defense, who has two good corners, got Cameron Wake, got a very solid pass rush with that uh, Vernon guy as well. And Teddy B comes home to Miami and lights up the Dolphins on Christmas week. Are we really doing this? Is this yes. really happening right now? This is my love for Teddy Bridgewater. He's back in the hood. He's Well, I don't know if he's around the hood, but he's back in Miami where it all started, and he has a huge-ass homecoming. I'm thinking at least five touchdowns, at least 87% completion percentage, at least 97.9 QBR, at least zero interceptions. There you go. <laughs> okay. At least. Baltimore <laughs> at Houston. It's weird how... Uh, I always go off ESPN schedules, but it's weird how often our teams are put back-to-back. It is. It's very odd. Anyways, Baltimore at Houston, the Justin Forsett Bowl. Look, I mean, I got to be honest. No, I, I really think Baltimore wins. I'm sorry. I don't want them to, but I think they do. 
Yeah, I got Baltimore on the road as well. Even though, you, speaking of homecomings, your boy, not Bay, <laughs> but your boy. No, he's not my boy. Your boy. He's not my boy. Is he wearing number seven again, or do you have to pick another jersey number? I think he's wearing seven still. I don't know. Good question. I'll look that up and get back to you. Detroit at Chicago, where Detroit are seven point favorites. Who you got? Detroit. <laughs> yes, poor Jimmy Clausen. And, you know, Jay Cutler he will eventually just get it done once he gets some weapons around him. I mean, uh, who who is Matt Forty? Matt <laughs> from Apparently Tulane? they don't know. Apparently they don't know who, who that is in Chicago. Uh, Alshon Jeff Array. Apparently yeah. all these all the people I don't know are French, so who knew? Uh, Cleveland at Carolina. That's always happened. Cleveland at Carolina. Manziel versus it looks like Cam's gonna start on Sunday. Who you got? That it doesn't matter. Cam has started all season and we've seen how that's gone. Um at the same time, Cleveland. Who jeez, man. Implosion, speaking of. Um I'm gonna go with Carolina. Uh, I have Carolina at home as well. Claire, we're only differing on one game so far. He, hot Fix takes. it. Atlanta Fix it. at New Orleans. Who you get? This one's like hotly contested amongst the fan bases and the players are all over social media talking smack to each other. It's pretty crazy. Not a lot um, of teeth in this matchup, though. There's really not, but aren't they still fighting for a playoff spot? Yes. So... Uh, I guess New Orleans, if awesome. you got to pick one. Baby, because I got Atlanta at home. I think they send New Orleans to five straight home losses. Atlanta is, isn't is terrible, although they have zero offensive line and their defense kind of sucks, and Mike Smith is going to get fired, and Rex Ryan is going to get hired down in Atlanta. If you, know what I think, you know what I think is funny is at the beginning of the season, I was on Atlanta's bandwagon, and mm-hmm. you were on the Saints bandwagon, and here – in week 16, we are picking the opposite teams to win in our picks. Actually, full disclosure, I picked Tampa to win this division. <laughs> did you? I thought you said New Orleans was going to roll. Uh, I did. Not. Uh, I might have. Uh, who knows? Uh, Green <laughs> Bay at Tampa Bay. Speak of the devil, who you get? The Battle of the Bays. Uh, but former, not Bay. B-A-E Bay. Former B-A-E. NFC Central matchup. I miss those days. I don't even know what an NFC Central is. Um, uh, back before the stupid no, Houston Texans came in and then ruined everything, we're, there used to be three divisions per conference, and it was glorious. No, I remember. I was just kidding. But there used to be the AFC Central as well. And, yeah, I remember that too. Good old days. Anyway, point is, is Green Bay will probably accidentally kill Tampa Bay. Yeah, it's going to be ugly, even though – uh, Buffalo's defense is slightly better than Tampa's. Sorry. Plus with Gerald McCoy out on IR for the rest of the year. So bye, Felicia. Uh, Kansas City at Pittsburgh. Who you got? Pittsburgh. I got Pittsburgh as well. Kansas City looked good last week, except they're playing Oakland at home. So who knew? Uh, yeah. New England at the Jets. Who you get? Really? You want me to answer this? New uh, England. This might be Rex Ryan's YOLO moment. He might pull out like 17 Wildcats and nine fake punts. Just, it would be so fitting for him to get one last win versus Belichick before he's shown the door. Yeah, man. I Uh, don't know about that. That being said, I got the Patriots too. Yeah, okay. Buffalo at Oakland. Who you got? Buffalo. I got Buffalo too. And you know what stinks is that they're playing probably as well as any team in the league right now. And yep. they could end up with 10 wins and not make the playoffs. Yeah. Sucks to be Buffalo. If they it's only, always suck to be Buffalo, though. It, it does. <laughs> and they don't have a first-round pick, and their quarterback situation is still so much up in the air. Oh. Oh. What if they trade for Jay Cutler? Or Johnny Mansell. Because you know Cutler's not going to fetch a lot. I actually threw this out there. The Bears might have to give up a higher draft pick to get rid of Cutler just because of that base salary. And – so Cutler and a number one for Buffalo's number two. I mean, how crazy would that be? Could be. It, could it also would be, be banana cream pie e cig crazy. It could also bananas. be bananas. B a n a n a s. Um, but it could oh, wait, also wait, wait, be. Wait, 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 wait. Pause right there. So you're you're talking smack about Taylor Swift, but then you'll go ahead and quote Gwen Stefani. Come on. 
Come on. At least Gwen Stefani, before she went solo, actually created actual music with people. That was creative and inspired. Yeah. Taylor Swift, not so much. Claire, I'm going to call you a hollaback girl. No, I don't like her solo stuff, but I do like the early No Doubt stuff. Indianapolis at uh, – oh, sorry. Uh, you were, I interrupted your thought. <laughs> what were you going to say? No, I'm good. I don't even remember now. Indianapolis at it. Dallas. Who you get? This is a tough one. This is but a good game. It could be. I think that Dallas has a lot more to play for than Indy does at the moment. Indy's playing for, what, AFC seeding right now as opposed to they've won the division. So, well, to, and, to a degree, because uh, I think they're a game behind New England and Denver, and Denver. they both they both had, uh, and Indianapolis lost both those head to heads. So, probably not going to get a bye in the first round. So now just so, between three and four. So then I'm going to go with Dallas, just given what they're playing for. Yeah, I, I got Dallas too. Demarco Murray looks like he's going to play. It doesn't look like uh, that hand thing will be a big deal since it was a clean break. Just put. <laughs> A piece of metal in your hand and then go play. I mean, how? Well, come on! I, I, I would not anticipate Demarco Murray being Demarco Murray this week. I just wouldn't be able to do it. Coming off a hand surgery, are you serious? Really? And you're a running back, and people are constantly putting their helmet onto your hand to knock the ball out. I just don't see that going well. I don't but, know. Emmett, Emmett Smith uh, ended up one year playing with a separated shoulder. I mean, you, you would think that that would be a lot worse for a running back. You would think, but not everyone's the same. I'm not able to compare the two. I mean, I just don't think it's going to be as simple as people think. And I think that also Jerry Jones has a reputation Jerry. recently of forcing players to play even when it's questionable. So well, we he, know that he said this is like a Super Bowl week every week. So and in regard to DeMarco Murray. Well, you know, it's I, like what they say. The player is going to play. Play, 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 play. And the hate is going to hey, hey, hey. Oh, come on. You know the words. Only because I have a six-year-old niece who forces it upon me. Don't judge me. This Quit is Taylor me. Swift hour of the Claire vs. Girls show. It's uh, gross. It, I have Dallas at, at home as well. And I, I think Murray, they're going to still run the piss out of him because they have no intention of resigning him because they're going after Adrian. <sighs> Whatever you, you know, say, bro. It, it is. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Murray still gets 25 plus carries on Sunday. We'll see what happens. Giants at St. Louis. Who you get? St. Louis. I got St. Louis at home as well. They're kind of in Buffalo's mold where they're playing just as good as anyone else in the league. They just need the quarterback. <laughs> That's a lot of teams that would just need. That quarterback. Sunday night football. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, no, it's Monday night. Uh, Seattle at Arizona. <laughs> who you got? I'm going to go with Seattle. Their defense is ridiculous, and Arizona's offense is questionable at best at the moment. I had a tough time with this as well, but I think Arizona gets it done at home. Okay. So I'm taking Arizona at home. I'm sure I, I might regret it. Also, uh, Cliff Averill just got signed up. He got paid. So now they have Sherman, Thomas, Averill, and uh, a couple other pieces on that defense locked up for long-term contracts. And after they have to pay Russell in the offseason, which ain't going to be cheap, how much money are they going to have left? Not a lot. I don't, I don't know. I've been wondering this ever since last season. Booyah. Last one, Monday Night Football. Dun, 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 dun. There you go. That's correct. Denver at Cincinnati. Who you got? Wow. This is a toughie because, well, not because of anything. It's just as tough. But I'm going to go with Denver. Uh, I'm going to go with Cincinnati at home because it's not the playoffs. So that means Andy Dalton would be good, Andy Dalton. And I do think that the – the Peyton decline is going to continue. I mean, the past couple of weeks, yes, they are running the ball, but I think they're doing that just because Peyton's not Peyton a- right. anymore. He just doesn't look right. And Paul Gunther on that defense, a Zimmer disciple, hello, has been doing very good things there. And uh, I think they get to Peyton a little bit as outside swirling wins three river stadium or 
you know, wherever place they play. Oh, Paul Brown Stadium. And mm-hmm. uh, I think it might be by Felicia. I don't I don't have a lot of faith on Denver getting very far in the playoffs. Let's say that. Okay. Okay. So we differ on four games, San Francisco, San Diego, Atlanta, New Orleans, Arizona, Seattle, and Cincy, and Denver. I wish you a moderate amount of luck, but I think you're going to need it. All right. Bring it on. You don't scare me. Boo. Yeah. And so we're just wrapping up this episode of Claire vs. Carlson show. Why are you such a Grinch? You're a mean one. I think it's great to give people gifts, but I I hate the commercialization of Mm. the whole point of Christmas is as a Christian holiday. And I find people to act very unchristian during this time of year. And I'm not a Christian. Especially okay? Black Friday shopping. And I would be a better Christian than a lot of people out there who celebrate Christmas. Because they act like jerks. And they act like it's all about spoiling people and giving them all gifts and getting gifts. And it's just stupid to me. I just think it makes us more materialistic, Christmas does, as a society. Yep, I agree. So I don't like it. It's but what it is. What about, I like giving people gifts, though, still, too, at the same time. Yeah, see, we're kind of in that boat, too, as as, um, as a young family. We don't really go too overboard. We're a big, uh, useful uh, gift family. And mm-hmm. the wife has something. What's it called? It's something you something you want, something you need, something. Functional? Something functional, something to read. And because she's a, like a big book nerd as well. And. Uh, but what about just like the being together with family and eating good food and Christmas cookies? Hello. I just think you can do that any time of year. You can't have Christmas cookies on Arbor Day, Claire. Well, you can make the same cookies. They just don't look like Christmas. But it's, it, it's not the same without elf magic. I don't believe in elves. You, you believe in trolls, though. Well, they are real. The trolls are real. That is true. All right, so Claire, do you have any parting words to the listeners as we roll out and wrap up 2014? Yeah. Can everyone just not be a jerk on Christmas and be nice and make it about good things and not selfish, crappy things? That's all, America. Make it about good things, America. And that is it for us. And uh, good game by Felicia 2014. We will check you back on january 2nd in 2015 it'll be a brand new year it'll be a brand new time claire will uh be her usual cheery self after new year's although what are you a big new year's person i love the actual event of new year's because it's just fun but Uh, uh, as you're vomiting on your shoes bubbly i don't go out Ooh. This place I stayed at in New Orleans, not to change the subject, but this week I got a place on Hotwire for 70 bucks. It was the Royal Senesta, and it's, like, super fancy, like, mega fancy. And I got there, and there was a whole bottle of champagne there waiting for me in my room. So I called the front desk, and I said, well, do I have to pay for this? Is it just for me? Can I just drink it? And they said, yes, Alice, open me, drink me. And so I did. We were like, Alice, who the is Alice? Alice in Wonderland. Oh. Drink me. Oh, lame. Boo. I, I boo you. All right, and that's how we're going to wrap up 2014, me booing Claire. Uh, but we're gone. We are part of the Late Night Sports Radio Network, latenightsportsradio.com. Say goodnight, Claire. Good night, Claire. I'm booing you. And you're drunken Alice in Wonderland. The mat. Yeah. Oh, come. All right, so the, the new movie really pissed me off, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, Good night, everyone. Enjoy your weekend and have a very safe and happy holiday season if you are even if you are a grinch and we'll be back here january 2nd 2015 we will catch you on the flip side bye bye the music was created and produced by deep to hear more of his tracks check out soundcloud.com forward slash d in my opinion that sucked